What's going on, people? Uh, my name is Drew, and here's my review of Dune Part 2, directed by Denis Villeneuve. I'm just going to cut to the chase. This movie is awesome. Uh, this movie is fantastic. I love this movie. I cannot wait to see it again. As a matter of fact, I'm seeing it in the morning, or I guess midday. I'm seeing it at 12. Yeah, let's just talk about it you know what i'm saying screw a formal review let's just talk about this john so if you didn't see dune part one there's no way i could give you a whole rundown of everything that happens in that movie in any kind of short fashion so you just gotta watch dune part one i mean if you want to watch this you can watch this movie without having seen the first one, but I definitely wouldn't recommend it. If you got HBO Max or, you know, if you know somebody that has the movie on physical, I would go ahead and watch the first one just so that you have all the context, you have all the information you need, so you can set yourself up to enjoy this movie as much as possible because you deserve to. It's an amazing experience, man. This is an epic experience. But I guess I'll give you a little bit of what happened last time. So basically there's this planet called Arrakis and it's a desert planet. And on this planet is this stuff called Spice. And Spice is basically what this universe is in love with. They love Spice. It does everything they need. It gives them fuel for stuff. It can also get you high if you consume a whole bunch of it. So um, you can also put it in your food. I, yeah. <laughs> so there's houses and these houses basically represent different groups of people different families if you will we have the atreides we have the harkonnen the rest of the people don't really matter right now i mean except for the fremen the fremen are the natives to the desert planet arrakis but we have the harkonnen and we have the atreides the harkonnen were in charge of arrakis and then the emperor who is over everybody think of the emperor as like the president and think of like the harkonnen and the atreides as like different states you know what i mean like just think about it like that the emperor is just like yo i want the harkonnens off of arrakis and i want the atreides on arrakis but in reality the emperor is conspiring with the harkonnen to kill off the atreides family and have the harkonnens basically retake over arrakis why watch the movie bro so yeah, at the end of that movie, basically most of the Atreides family is completely eradicated. The only seeming survivors are Paul and his mother Jessica, played respectively by Timothy Chalamet and Rebecca Ferguson, who is incredible. I love Rebecca Ferguson. Holy shit. But yeah, coming into this movie, Paul and Jessica have pretty much joined the Fremen. They have joined the natives of Arrakis to basically plan their rebellion against the Harkonnen, their rebellion against the Emperor, and here we have our movie. And and if you want more details than that, I'm sorry. I just don't have the ability to get into all of this without spoilers. So you're just going to have to watch the movie or tune into the spoiler review to get all them extra plot details if that's what you're looking for. But speaking of the plot, there are quite a couple of twists and turns in this film that really caught me off guard. You know, I love the first Dune and as you can see. I will say the story never really had me like super enthralled. I wasn't like super invested in the story. I was more just invested in the characters themselves. But this time around, I was really blown away specifically by the script. The way these events play out, there's certain things we find out about certain characters that are really impactful and really add a lot to what's being built up here. This movie is deliberately slow paced. It is deliberately character driven and focused on a lot of sci-fi world building. This is not an action movie. There are quite a few action scenes in it and particularly the last 20 to 30 minutes have some really good action, some really good fighting, and some incredible visuals. As a matter of fact, incredible visuals throughout. I'm just warning you, don't go into this expecting, you know, a whole bunch of fighting throughout the whole movie. It's not like that, especially in the first half. You're chilling with the characters a lot, and you're focusing a lot more on the dialogue, on the politics of the situation. Temper your expectations. I want everyone to see this movie because it's an incredible movie. I want you to go watch this. I just want you to go watch it knowing what you're going to watch. So as you all know, everybody and their grandmother is in this movie. Timothy Chalamet, Zendaya, Javier Bardem, Dave Bautista, Austin Butler, Rebecca Ferguson, like I said earlier. Stellan Skarsgård is in this. Florence Pugh is in this one. Christopher Walken is in this one. There's a lot of people in these movies, man. And yeah, they all do an incredible job. One thing I'm really starting to admire about Denis Villeneuve is his command of actors. 
actors. He's able to pull really compelling and honestly human performances out of all his characters. Honestly, they always feel like real people, except when maybe you're talking about the Harkonnens because them niggas are psychopaths. But yeah, everyone just feels like real people and the dialogue always is really good. It was really refreshing to see a blockbuster with dialogue that isn't, well, ass. I'm not saying it's like Quentin Tarantino dialogue or anything like that. I'm just saying that when the characters are talking to each other, it feels like real people talking to each other. It doesn't feel like an AI wrote the script. I really felt the uh, natural progression of the relationship between uh, Timothy and Zendaya. I thought their chemistry was great. They played Paul and Chani and um, yeah, I thought their I thought they, uh, I really bought into their, uh, budding relationship. It never felt forced. It felt like it was taking its time to develop. And by the time they pretty much established that they're a thing, you felt it. You felt like it was natural and they're, they're good together. And then certain things happen towards the end of the story that I won't dare spoil for you that, uh, uh, put that relationship in a very interesting place. <laughs> this is very much a dramatic sci-fi, but I was surprised that there were quite a few moments of levity in there specifically coming from Javier Bardem's character Stilgard he was hilarious in this film he's he's absolutely funny Stilgard is basically this character that fully believes that Paul is the second coming of Christ he's the messiah he's here to save everybody and Paul is openly rejecting that notion and Stilgard will literally just be like hey he's just being humble don't listen to him he, he's he's here to save us guys don't listen to him the first dune I wouldn't say that it's a laugh riot you know what I mean? It's very, very dramatic, very theatrical, very self-serious for a lot of it. So I was really surprised to see quite a good sense of humor in this film. And let's talk about the obvious stuff. The visuals are, of course, incredible. If you've seen one trailer for either of these movies, you already know. It's wild to think about how gorgeous this movie is considering that it takes place mostly on a desert planet, a freaking desert. There's nothing but freaking ugly ass sand everywhere how do you make this look so beautiful man like it is true movie magic that these filmmakers are able to craft when the studios give them the space to craft it Yeah, the set design is fantastic. Every location in the film, it feels real. It feels lived in. It feels like it just, uh, it, it leaves you in awe when you get these super wide shots of these areas. They, they just look awe-inspiring, truly. The effects are flawless absolutely flawless as they should be for these humongous big ass blockbusters man i mean honestly the effects should never look worse than this they never should look worse with all the money that they spend bro give these visual effects artists the time and the resources to be able to make this stuff look as amazing as this looks this is one of the best looking movies i've ever seen costume design is great the score is fantastic once again i love the music in this film so many moments where you know what What's going on between the characters is already highly compelling. What's going on in terms of the story is already so interesting. And it'll just hit the home run with this amazing music in the background that just feels grand. It feels epic. It feels like you're watching something that is, you know... I'm struggling to even find the words to describe this movie with because what words could I use that you haven't already seen? You've seen the buzz around this movie. You've seen what people have said and I'm not here to disagree. The movie's fantastic. It's awesome. I will say I do have a couple of critiques and they're small critiques, but critiques nonetheless. Uh, For one, the movie is long as hell. Now, I'm not one to take off a lot of points for a movie being long. Some of my favorite movies of all time are are super long. Avengers Endgame is three hours. The Wolf of Wall Street is three hours. The Dark Knight is two and a half. Yeah, I'd be no stranger to the long movies. It's just that I did feel the length in this one, specifically around the middle portion of the film. I'm not saying the movie got boring at any point. It's just that you you do start to kind of feel the fatigue of its length, especially when you think about the fact that it is two hours and 45 minutes. So when you're about an hour or so in, you already kind of know in the back of your head that it's nowhere near wrapping up. And yeah, yeah, it uh it's a long movie 
it's it's a long movie. Also, um, I wasn't as emotionally invested in the characters as I felt like I wanted to be. I definitely care about the characters and I care about the situations they're in and I definitely feel their peril and their desperation. I guess I just wasn't as emotionally captivated as I felt like I should have been, but... I understand there's a whole nother part coming, so we're just gonna have to see what happens in that next part. And maybe that next part will deliver all of those emotions that I'm looking for. But yeah, even with that, this movie is awesome. It's amazing. It's fantastic. It's incredible. It's a must see. You should go see it. I mean, holy shit, Dune Part 2. A plus. Definitely go check this out if you haven't already. Definitely bring some friends, bring the family. But Please be quiet in the theater. Please be quiet. This movie is occasionally loud, but it's not loud the whole time. There's a lot of discussion going on in the film, and you're going to want to hear what the characters are saying, and the rest of the audience is going to want to hear what they're saying too. So just respect your fellow audience members the same way you want them to respect you, and just enjoy this fucking movie because it's incredible so uh yeah just a couple quick notes before we get out of here first of all i know it may seem like i'm a little low energy and that is because well i'm tired but nevertheless we're gonna get this content out i got the content on the way um also i am on twitch now now i haven't had a show or anything like that recently but i'm basically letting you guys know that i will be having my first show soon so you know stay tuned in the community tabs or whatever to see when i'm gonna be going live that's all i got for you guys today so if you like the video hit that like button if you want to see more of me hit that subscribe button and if you got any suggestions on what can make my videos better put that in the comment section i've been drew and i'll see you guys next time